Welcome back to the program. A very good football game last night over at Pelche Stadium. This on the campus of E.D. White. And, you know, a lot of times when two rival teams start off the season, you're kind of bummed out because it's first game of the year and you don't want the rivals to be playing. I, I don't know. This, this is a great game to start the year off. The two teams, although they're rivals, they get along well. After the game, they did a nice thing in the middle of the field that I thought was very nice. And it wasn't just a few players. It was the players, the coaches, even some fans got out there. But uh, uh, the real deal, folks, Elijah Maguire can run with the football, and Edie White does what they do best. They pound it, so it was pounding against finesse, so to speak. Let's get out to Pelche Stadium. We're gonna look at some highlights. Most of this coming mid first quarter into the second quarter as we had to move our cameras around a lot last night. A lot of games going on in Thibodeau. This guy did a great job. Luke Lejeune, only 155 pounds, ran for 180 something yards in this game. And they actually switched sides of the field. This is going into the second quarter. Levi Boudreau runs it in. And at this point, E.D. White takes the lead from Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt scored early, but there you see it. E.D. White goes up seven to six. On the next possession for Vanderbilt, ball goes over Elijah McGuire's head as he is in the shotgun and quarterback position. And I got to tell you, he almost broke that. If Matt Daigle doesn't push him out of bounds, I think he's still running with the ball. This guy is phenomenal. I'm telling you, it, it's so fun to watch. It's almost like an open field punt return that he is really terrific at every play, every play. This is Benton Arsenal. He passes it to Stephen LaBeouf. I think this guy... Uh, if you go an all-around MVP for offense and defense, it was him. He did a great job for E.D. White. Picks up a first down there. Benton Arsenal tries to get it in the end zone. He does not, so they turn it over on downs, but they get the ball back on the turnover. Here is Benton Arsenal again trying to go around right in. He's close, but he doesn't get it in. But they give it to big Bobby Boussinel, if I'm not mistaken, a little bit later, and they do get it in. Here is... Oh, I'm sorry. That was fourth down. But they get the ball right back. Here we go. That is Devin Knight. That ball was thrown behind the line of scrimmage, so E.D. White gets it back, and there is Bobby Boussinel going in for the touchdown. E.D. White goes ahead. At halftime, our cameras left. There was an interesting play right before half. Elijah McGuire runs for about 70-something yards and gets tackled at the one-yard line with no time left on the clock at halftime. Could have possibly been a difference maker. But E.D. White, who really started to dominate the line of scrimmage in the second half, goes on to win 30-28. to Vanderbilt had the ball last, but they could not get it in. That score at the bottom, oh, I got to tell you, a lot of people thought Donaldsonville was going to be a very good football team, and they may very well be, but that bodes well for Assumption. Assumption wins 27-8. And Don Torres has got him rolling again. Just going back to the Vanderbilt game, a few stats from that. Again, Luke Lejeune, 18 carries for 181 yards. Didn't even start for those folks. And I understand John Ford, who was a public address announcer for E.D. White, was telling me that that is Lance's son. So Lance used to coach over at Central Lafouche and at E.D. White, his dad, Preston Lejeune. So this is Preston Lejeune's grandson. Had a great game. And again, I think the Arsenal kid, excuse me, the LaBeouf kid, Stephen LaBeouf did a great job. 362 total yards for Vanderbilt Catholic. Elijah McGuire had 251 of it running the ball. He is something special. A great game. It was very fun. It's sad to see somebody lose something like that. You guys have E.D. White coming up. I got to ask you, so you got this one out the way. You have a rival in South Terrebonne coming up next. Then you have E.D. White. Then who's after that? Uh, we get Westgate. And then we get south for food. So you got a stretch coming up, and I know you're playing them one at a time, but you got a a, a, a tough a tough road coming up, right? Oh yeah, you know we're going to grow up quick. You know it's just one of those things where it's a schedule and you got to go, and then after that it doesn't get any easier. You got the rest of your district teams, and you just got to keep playing football. Well, doing a scrimmage, uh, I keep calling it a scrimmage because actually that's what it is. The jamboree last week. I was very impressed. You know we hear about Justin having to go off to go to this camp for baseball. You had. A lot of seniors graduate, obviously. You had a couple of kids who didn't come back that you were maybe going to count on. But guys filled in. Robert Gordon has been really good for you. You got two young men in the backfield with Kendrick Boudreaux who did a good job. It it looks like y'all just kind of kept it going, you know? Yeah, you, you got to, you know. It's high school football, and, I, you know, I, I know everybody understands it. But, you know, unless you're out there every day and you're coaching it and you're, you're doing what Chris Dugas and Coach Curlin and all them have been doing and, 
you know, you just got to get the ones you have and do the best you can with them, and hopefully the kids will play hard for you, and, and you can build a program and get a little tradition going, and it's just going to be a fun time to be with those kids, and hopefully they'll have some memories and go on and have, have a good life. Well, time to start scouting, because now we have Coach Curlin's team, South Terrebonne. <laughs> they took on Miller McCoy last night. Now, Miller McCoy is supposed to be a very tough team. This was out at South Terrebonne Memorial, and if you don't see rain, it's because they played it last night. The smart thing to do last night. Jaquez Flores, 193 yards on only 12 carries. Actually, didn't play that much. That was a handoff to him from Trevon Smith. Here's Trevon Smith. He runs it around and fools everybody from Miller McCoy for a touchdown. On for the conversion, Matt Benoit. And he is good, young sophomore who's a very good athlete. Here we go on the ensuing kickoff. South Terrebonne likes that sky kick. And I know we don't see it very well, but the ball is fumbled and South Terrebonne gets the ball back. Trevon Smith passes it. Here to his favorite receiver, Dalvin Richardson. Richardson had three catches in last night's game, none for touchdowns, but he, uh, he is always a threat, and that's what South Terrebonne does pretty well this year, throw the ball. Now, I understand Miller McCoy just started throwing after a while, and they did pick up a lot of yardage throwing the ball, 300 yards total in passing, but it was kind of after the fact because at one point in this game, South Terrebonne was ahead 21 to nothing. Miller McCoy made a run at it, and then South Terrebonne pulls away. They really blow this open. That is Leo Rodriguez around right in. He had a good game, had a touchdown for South Terrebonne. And coming into your living room is Channing Champagne, and we got a final score on that one from last night. South Terrebonne kind of runs away with it after a while, 40 to 24 against a Miller McCoy team that is actually very athletic, very athletic. And we're going to get that Miller McCoy right. <laughs> Let's go <laughs> one more time, Jay. Dead yeah, in. That is go. awesome. I like the way it kind of, <laughs> that was an effect we meant, folks. That was just something we wanted to see if everybody could catch on to. I, I got to tell you, Jason, I didn't see that bottom score, though. <laughs> Real quick, if we could get to that bottom score, because a lot of people are interested in the area. Como, a team that South Terrebonne used to play year in and year out, I think, for the last four years. They beat Morgan City tonight, 37 to nothing. That game was played in the Lafayette area. Your thoughts on South Terrebonne, you know, you all are, the coaching staffs are good friends, you know, it's it's a rivalry to everybody else. You guys get along. Is it one you hate? Is it one you, because you're not uh, in the same district this year. No, we're not in the same district. Uh, seems like every year in the past we end up playing that game and it really means something for somebody. And uh, it's great to play them. You know, I got a lot of respect for Coach Curlin, uh, you know, done some really great things and like you said friends with most of the rest of the staff and coach McCormick and coach Adams and they played well last night and I was very impressed with their offense and defensively I thought they played pretty well too. You going back to South Terrebonne Memorial Stadium? Yes we're going oh, back. Oh so to, to well it's not that far you could it, be going to. It, it might be flooded by the time you get out of the show. But we'll it see. could be it's yeah it is bad but the weather's supposed to be good next weekend let's hope let's have our fingers crossed on that one and actually you're going to be on radio 106.3 uh, FM so the big mm -hmm. radio station next week. Got to take a commercial break. When we come back, there are some other games we have highlights from. One of those was tonight. H.L. Bourgeois taking on Clark. Saw a little bit of that one the first quarter, and the rain was flowing across the field sideways. We'll show you that. And we'll also show you Ponchatoula against Central Lafouche. That was last night. We'll do that after this break.